and welcome back to the crochetcrowd.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we are going to be working on the brimming with fun cap. This is a beautiful cap that is really casual looking, has a nice brim in the front. In the pattern it calls to put cardboard in the front of this uh, particular brim but we've opt not to because we're using a different yarn than what is suggested. Today I'm using the Schockemeyer Boston yarn. You're going to need three 50 gram balls in order to pull this off and this is an amazing now because the yarn is nice and thick this visor is already really stiff on its own and it comes right straight down uh, like a clo hat when you're wearing it now the yarn is made up of 70 percent acrylic and then 30 percent virgin wool and for us here in the northern uh, hemisphere this is a great hat for keeping you warm plus keeping you very casual looking at the same time and of course you can change the colors within the boston family in order to match your outfit. So without further ado, let's grab our size H or 5.0 millimeter crochet hook today. Three balls of Boston yarn and that is going to get us started. So let's begin. Let's begin today. I'm going to be using a stitch marker, just a piece of cut yarn. Remember, if you'd like to follow along in this pattern, I provided the link for the more information. Thank you to redheart.com for allowing me to use this pattern. And what we have here is that we're just creating a slip knot and we're going to start on the first one. So using a size H, five millimeter crochet hook. <laughs> not sure I already said that. So here we go. So we're going to chain four. Remember the one on the hook does not count as four. So, or does not count as one. So we have one, two, three, and four. Let's form a ring by inserting the hook into the beginning chain like this and then grabbing the yarn and pulling through. And so now we have our center ring. I'm just going to naturally grab this string here and just hold it together so that we can uh, hide that in in the next rotation as we go around. In round one it says chain three count as a double crochet th here and throughout. So that's throughout the entire pattern. So whenever we uh, chain three to start that means it's a double crochet. And it says to put um, seven do double crochets into the, into the round. So what we want to do, let's chain three. One, two, three. So if that counts as a double crochet in the rules of crochet and there's, we have to apply seven double crochets going into the center of the ring and, our, and uh, just making ourselves go around, that means that there's going to be a total of eight stitches going around. And that makes a difference because you need to keep count of your stitches as you do um, rotate. And so eight actually makes any sense. So the first one counts as one, two, three, and four. And we continue just to keep going around until we get to the number eight. So now I have my eight in. So you can count the first chain as one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We join it to the beginning top a chain th with a chain three, just like this. And it says in the instructions to mark that stitch with a, with a stitch marker. So what I want you to do is the piece that's coming down underneath, okay? So there's where the loop is. I want you to grab your stitch marker and it doesn't have to be yarn, it could be a plastic uh, thingamabob as well. Just pull through and that will signify to you when you get all the way back around. So use that stitch marker to help you count as you go. So let's move along to round number two. Now round number two I've never seen done in a hat before so this is a new one for me. So what we have to do, we have to chain three. So I'm just going to take it step by step. So one, two, three, remember that's a double crochet and it says to put two double crochets in the same space which is where this is coming out of. So we're going to put two more double crochets into that same space. Okay, so this is an unusual thing for hats. You don't ever see this. So it says now you're going to put two double or three double crochets into each stitch going all the way around. This is your first one right here. So we want to make sure that we're keeping in balance with the same amount of stitches. So basically every stitch going around is going to have three double crochets. So that was two and three. And continue to do that all the way around on this row. So in fact what I want to tell you then is that if we had uh, eight um, double crochets in the last round and we're putting three into each one there mean th that means that there should be th eight groups of three going around this particular um, section at this point and that will uh, help you stay in balanced at this time. So I've come all the way back around. I do want to make sure that I have my eight. So you can see that there's a thing of three here. So we have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight groups of three. We're now going to join this with the uh, top of the chain three that we started with. So join and just pull a larger loop and now let's grab that stitch marker and just pull it through the bottom section of that stitch. Okay, so right in the bottom there. See that? Just grab that stitch marker. So if you have a regular stitch marker, you just have to keep moving it up. I like to put it into the yarn like this. It helps you just really see where you're going. So that concludes round number two. In round number three, we're now going to start doing this ridging work that appears and we just have to pay attention to where they're going in as we do it. So this is what we're going to be doing next. So this is exactly the front post double crochet that we're seeing here that is being lifted up to create these ridges. So let's begin at round number three. It's kind of an unusual round and it just occurred to me, I was looking at the instructions kind of confused and I understand what's being asked of us now. Not only do we have to create the ridges, but we also have to maintain the balance of growing this hat at the top of the head. So that it's not gonna make sense to you right at this moment, but just bear with me and let me explain as we go. So we're going to chain three first. One, two, and three. Okay, and it says double crochet and front front post double crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to double crochet as normal into the next stitch. And then it says to front post double crochet. Okay, so what we're going to do right in top, like see how it's on top? We want to go into the same one underneath and we're going to front post. So we're going to just pop in behind a post, pull up and then double crochet as normal. And then it says to put a double crochet in the next two stitches. Okay, so here's what's happening. The middle one of the group of three is where we're going to be applying the double crochet and also the front post double crochet. That's where the hat is growing. So this is how we're maintaining the hat to grow evenly. It's actually done right in the center of the three. So let's uh, continue. We're just going to double crochet in the next two. Okay, so that's the end of the one group of three and we're going to double crochet into the next one which is the beginning of the next group of three and then the next one is a double crochet and front post double crochet into the same one. So now we come down and do the front post. Okay and then we double crochet in the next two. So I'll review that one more time. So we're double crocheting the next two. Okay so now we're going to do the one with the two in there. So we're going to double crochet into this one which is the middle of the next group of three and then we're going to come in and do the front post double crochet into the same stitch. Continue to do that all the way around. You can see it's, it's in this color. It's not really that vibrant at this moment, but it will be. You just gotta trust me. So we're coming up to the final section of three and I've already got the first one in. So the next one is a double crochet. This is the middle of the group of three and then the front post double. And then we just have the final one left. So we just have the final stitch here and then we're here. So now we have to join it to the beginning of the uh, chain three to the top and let's move that stitch marker up. So basically right where we've done the front post double crochet if you never got the concept that's where we are still growing the round at that point. So basically there's two stitches into one therefore it's making the circle grow bigger without actually collapsing in on itself and that concludes round number three. Let's move up to round number four next. In round number four we're going to start actually skipping stitches and it says to chain four and it says count as a double crochet in chain one. So in the rules of double crochet then if chain three equals a double crochet then chaining of four equals a double crochet plus a chain if that makes any sense to you. So let's say begin we're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four. So just visualize that this chain is going up plus it's also bending over like this. Okay, that'll help you. So it says to skip the first one and in the next one we're going to do double crochet and then front post double crochet. And here's the tip. It is right where this one is doing the, uh, the double, uh, the front post double crochet. That's the tip. Okay, so that, so that they're going to match each other. So you're going to put in a double crochet first and then here's the front post double crochet. We're going to do that one. See and this allows the ridge to, conter uh, to continue along. So now what it's saying to do is that you're going to chain one and then skip the next stitch which is right here and then double crochet into the next. But here's the thing is that your next one is not until here but you're not ready to jump there yet. So you have to chain one first, 
then you skip the next stitch and then you begin to double crochet right where that um, um, double crochet front post is and then front post double crochet into the same one. Okay, so let's review that again. So now that you have that you're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next. But you can see that this ridge is still too far so you chain one and that's where you're going to play next. So you're going to double crochet into that, that stitch with the ridge. Okay, and then you're going to front post double crochet that same stitch. Okay, this is going to create some gapping work in your work and that's what you're doing. So continue to do that. So chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet, chain one, okay, and then you're ready for the next one. So double crochet first and then front post and double crochet on that front post double crochet in the last round to keep that ridge uh, uh, consistent as you go around. I'm concluding round number four and I have that final one in here. This is the front post double crochet. This here is the chain three which counts as and chain uh, chain three plus another chain for the four. So what I'm saying to you is before you can get over there you have to chain one first to maintain the balance and then count the third one up. So one, two and three and then that's where you're going to join like so. So you can see here that you have it growing out. So make sure that you have enough ridges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So if you have anything less, you've uh, messed up on something. If you have any more, <laughs> you're having a great time already. So I just want to keep our count on those ridges so that it makes it easy to follow along. I've just pulled up my stitch marker so I can keep count and I'm ready for the next round, which is round number five. Round number five starts off really easy where we're going to be doing a chain three. So one, two and three to start and then what we're going to do is double crochet in the chain one space which is right here. It's see how they got the space that's where you're going to double crochet just right into the space itself and then the next one you're going to maintain then you're going to double crochet into the next stitch and then we're back on the ridge here so we're going to double crochet right on top of it and then front post and double crochet using that same stitch like so. So let's begin again. We're going to double crochet into the chain one space. We're double crocheting into the next stitch that's available. Then here we're double crocheting into the chain one space and then we're double crocheting into the stitch. So we're maintaining and building it out bigger as we go and I'll review that one more time. So now we're here. This is the, the ridge. So we're going to double crochet into that one and then around the post itself front post double crochet. So let me review this again. So we have double crochet into the chain one space. We're going to double crochet into the stitch. Okay, we're double crocheting into the next chain one space. We're double crocheting into the next stitch that's available and now you can see those are the ridges that are coming up so we're going to double crochet on the top of that one and then follow it up with the front post double crochet into the same one. So continue to do that all the way around and this was round number five. So I'm coming up to the conclusion of round number five and essentially we're just still following the pattern as we go just keeping in mind on those ridges just like this. Oops, I just dropped some plies there. This is made up of several plies of uh, yarn. It actually is really fabulous. It really feels different than conventional yarn and I really like it for that. It's got a lot of warm properties to it. So we have to then double crochet into the chain one space and then the pattern is starting to repeat on this side. So we're just going to join it to the top of the chain three that we started with and let's move up our stitch marker again so that we keep balance and that concludes off round number five. So let's uh, move up to round number six. Let's begin round number six. It's very similar to round number four and the fact is is that because it's getting bigger there's more gapping spaces to uh, to create here. So we're going to chain up four. One, two, three and four. Remember that's a double crochet and chain one in the rules. So it says skip next stitch which we're going to and then it says double crochet into the next. Okay and then what we're going to do is chain one I'm already starting to get a hold of this pattern here and it says to double crochet into the next stitch, okay, which is actually part of your ridges. Just like this and so then basically you have to then put in a front post double crochet into that same one. So you're going to be maintaining 
this as you go all the way around. So we're going to chain one and we're gonna skip the next stitch, go to the next. Okay, chain one, we're skipping the next stitch and going to the next one over and the ridges now are coming up but it's over here and we still have to chain one before we get there and then we're going to double crochet into the top of that ridge one and then front post double crochet into the same one. So in actual fact what we're doing here is in the ridges here, see how you have two here between the ridges? This time you're going to have making three and that just is the only difference. So let's review this one more time. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, go to the next one over chain one, again skip the next one, go to the second one over. See and we, we can still see the ridges over here. So we're chaining one and then that's where we're gonna put the double crochet into the top of that one with the ridge and then front post double crochet and continue to do that same configuration all the way around. You can see I just created my three gaps when this one was just two, this one's now three. So I'm coming all the way around. I've just done my front post double crochet there and remember we wanna maintain this pattern so we're going to chain one and then we're going to join to the top, uh, to the third one up. So one, two, and three. And you can clearly see that I'm maintaining my balance because again I have my three gapping spaces here. I have my three gapping spaces here so I know that I'm done it right. Let me move up that stretch marker so I can keep balanced. It's just easier to, to do that. And then basically this is really going good so far. So this was round number six. Let's move it along to round number seven next. Let's begin to do round number seven. We're gonna start off very easily. We're just going to chain off three. So one, two, and three. And this is so easy, it's not even funny. So we're going to uh, double crochet into the gapping space. How hard is that? And then we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. So the only thing that you need to pay attention for is these ridges. So this is a gapping space. So let's fill it in with a double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet the next stitch. So the next one is the actual front post double crochet that we have from here. So we're going to double crochet there first and then follow it up with a hat or with a front post double crochet to maintain the ridge. See? So you're just filling in the spaces. So here is your next chain one space. So let's fill it in with a double crochet. Let's put the next one as a double crochet. It's an actual piece. Then the next gapping space is a double crochet. The next stitch is a double crochet. There's another gap. And look, we've got the ridges coming up. And two more stitches. So the next one is a regular double crochet. And then here is your ridge. So it's a double crochet followed by a front post double crochet. And continue to do that same thing all the way around. It's pretty easy, right? I'm coming to the end of round number seven. And again, we're maintaining that that ridge, so double crochet, front post double crochet. And remember that we still have a gapping space here to fill in, so fill that in. And then we just join it to the top of the chain three that we started with. And let's move that up. So you still should have eight ridges going on. This pattern is actually really repetitive. It's just continuing to grow as it fits for an adult size head. And uh, it makes a lot of sense uh, once you just start playing with it and it's really quite fun and fabulous. So let's move along to round number eight. Okay, let's begin round number eight. We're going to chain up four, one, two, three, and four. That counts as a double crochet chain one. We skip the first stitch and go into the next one for a double crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, and go in, and then chain one, and then now we're on to the front post double crochet here. So we're going to double crochet into that one first and then a front post double crochet after that into the same one. So let's uh, maintain the pattern. So we're going to chain one, we skip the next stitch, go to the second for a double crochet. Okay, chain one, skip the next stitch, go to the second over. Chain one, okay, we skip again and chain one and then we're back the next when you skip it you're back on the front post here. So we're going to double crochet there first and then front post double crochet. So how we started here when we started is that when we come back around we're going to be creating the gapping space. So there in actual fact should be four now. Okay so we had two, three, and four. This one we only have three at this moment but we're not done. So that was kind of throwing me off in the very beginning but just maintain the pattern. So let's review again. So chain one, skip the next stitch, go to the second, chain one, skip the next, go to the second over, chain one, 
skip the next, go to the next, okay, chain one, and now you're back on the ridge, just like you see here. So let's double crochet, and then front post, double crochet into there. Okay, so just continue to do that all the way around. So I'm coming all the way around on number eight, and we're just, I have my front post in, I'm just going to chain one, and then I count the third one up, one, two, and three, and that's where I join. So remember what I said in the very beginning is that we had four gaps and gapping spaces, so now you can actually see that there's four, and there's four in each of those going all the way around. Let's move up that stitch marker, and let's get ourselves on to round number nine next. This is a really quick project when you actually boil it down, and this yarn is quite fabulous at the same time. Let's begin round number nine. In round number nine, we have to pay attention to this because this is when the game plan changes. So if you have not figured it out at this point, every time we've done one of these ridges, we put in a double crochet and a front post double crochet into the same stitch. This means that every time we hit one of these, we were growing the section, so when I say a section, in between the ridges by one, allowing you to have these gaps. Now, what we're doing is that we're changing the game plan for this one. So watch this. So we're no longer grabbing the hat. So now the hat is about full size and it's going to round off to create the actual size that will fit your head. Let's begin. We're going to do a chain three, one, two, and three. And simply, it's an easy round, but this time we don't, we have to play a little differently with the ridges. So we're just going to double crochet into the next chain one space and then double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into the next chain one space and then double crochet into the next stitch. Okay, double crochet into the next chain one space and double crochet into the next stitch. So here's where the plan changes. Right here on this ridge we are just going to do a front post double crochet only. So before what we were doing is putting a double crochet followed by a front post double crochet. We're only going to do a front post double crochet in there now. So this is no longer going to grow. So we're just going to start again on this side. So we're just one double crochet into the chain one space, uh, one double crochet into the next space. So double crochet, double crochet. So we're just basically double crocheting ourselves all the way around except for when it comes to those ridges we want to maintain those and that's a front post double crochet. Now I'm watching it with my, my fingers really. I can feel that ridge coming up. So you can either just kind of watch it as you go or you just use your fingers to do the work. So here's the front post double crochet. It's my next one. So I'm just going to put another front post double crochet in there and please do that all the way around. So now coming most of the way around here around number nine and again we're maintaining the pattern and maintaining that front post double crochet right where it's supposed to go. And don't forget that you still have a chain one space right after this to fill that in for the double crochet as well. And now let's begin to join it to the top of the chain three, like so. And now that round now is finalizing the round of the of the size of the hat, but don't put it on your head yet. You can, but um, it's not going to match yet. It still has a few more rounds to grow before it will actually match to your head perfectly. Let's begin round number 10. Very easy again. We've done this before so we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. That's a double crochet and chain one. So we're going to skip the first one and then double crochet into the next. So you've done this before and but we're going to change the game plan again on this one. So chain one and then we skip the next. We go to the next. Okay so we're no longer growing this. So chain one and again we skip and go to the next and then chain one and then we simply just come in and we just, let's begin round number 10, really easy. It's chain four, one, two, three, and four. Remember that's a double crochet chain one. We skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next, chain one, skip the next stitch and then double crochet into the next, chain one, and then this time we are going to come just before the actual um, front post double crochet just like that. Okay and then what we just have to do then is then this next one front post double crochet is just a front post double crochet like that. Okay so chain one and let's skip the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, go the second over and we keep doing that until we end up into that next uh, um, ridging area. So we skip the next stitch, go in, chain one and this will take you right to the one right before 
that ridge. So double crochet and then the next one is just a front post double crochet so you don't chain one in between there. So continue to do that all the way around. Okay, I'm coming all the way back around again matching that front post to the front post double crochet in this round and then we, of course we then double crochet our sorry chain one and then we join it with the at uh, the third one up just like so. And then we move that chain or that stitch marker up. And that concluded off round number 10. Okay, rounds number 11 to 15 is the repeat of rounds 9 and 10 all over. So you go 9, 10, 9, 10, 9. You end up with row number, round number 9. So let's say begin, let's review. So we're going to chain up basically 3, 1, 2, and 3 going on level 9. And then essentially just fill in the next. Now you see extra strings here. I've just changed my yarn. So I'm just uh, bearing the, the stragglers in so I know I don't see them. So essentially just fill in the chain 1 spaces with a double crochet. Okay, and then just double crochet into the regular stitches. So we're just, you already know how to do this so it's really easy. I just want to make sure I get these uh, strings buried as they go. So once you get to the front post double crochet that you see here, so you're just going to double crochet into the stitch before and then you're going to do front post double crochet right where the other one already is as well. Okay, so it's just a really easy round. So that is round number nine, a review. So you just want to continue to do that. So fill in the gaps, double crochet, double crochet, that was a stitch, gap, double crochet, stitch, and gap, and stitch, and gap. Okay, so you have your two there. So just give them one, one for the first one and then front post double crochet to match the other ridge that's appearing. Please do that all the way around and, that, and then that concludes off uh, round number 11 which is the same as number 9 and I will review number uh, 12 with you which is number 10 one more time. So let me finish this. I'll be right back and show you num round number 11 or round number 12 which is round number 10. So I'm concluding off round number 11 which is the same as number 9. Don't forget that gapping space right after that front post double crochet and then join it to the uh, top of the chain 3 like so and move up your stitch marker. So that was again a repeat uh, for row number 9 uh, for row number 11. So let's uh, begin. We're going to do the next one which is row number 12 which is the repeat of number 10. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. Again we skip the first stitch and go to the second over. Okay, chain one, skip the next stitch, go to the second over for double crochet, skip the next stitch, go to the second over and now you're right before this front post double crochet so the next one is just a front post double crochet to match. So chain one and then do it again. So skip the next one, chain one, skip the next, okay, chain one, skip the next chain one okay and then we're right before the the front post double crochet again so then we just front post double crochet the next one so continue to do that all the way around and pleat so now what you need to do is complete this round which is number uh, 12 and you need to do rounds number 13, 14, and 15 and when I come back I'll take you up on to row number 16 which is the final and just continue to repeat rows number 9 and 10 as per the instructions. Now I'm back. I do have rounds number 11 to 15 complete. It's just round 16 left. Really easy. And so essentially we are just going to start slip stitching in each one as we go around. Don't forget to keep that stitch marker in. We do need it for the next uh, starting of the brim. So we're just going to pull through and through. When you go to slip stitch just make sure you do give it a little bit extra slack to it because if you're too tight you're going to make uh, ruin your brim. So um, just continue to slip stitch all the way around and then uh, just um, uh, slip stitch it to the very beginning when you do that. So I just have to get used to uh, giving a little bit more tension. Again you know it's all part of a learning process as you go all the way around and I'll join you back up in just a moment. We'll finish this off and then we'll start doing the brim on the top side. When you get all the way back around continue to slip stitch right into the very last one and just slip stitch it to the beginning right where you've done the uh, stitch marker. And then what we're going to do is then fasten off and we're going to use a darning needle to weave, to weave that in. What I would also recommend at this point is that 
Um, I don't have enough yarn on my remaining ball. So remember I told you I have to get three. So I'm going to start the brim off with a brand new ball of yarn. So therefore this, if you're using this yarn you're going to run out in mid brim. Why bother? You just get your new ball of yarn and just go. So when we come back I'm going to show you what we need to do to start the brim and what are the tips that you need to do. Okay let's begin to do the brim of the hat. This is where the stitch marker is. So we know this is where we stopped and started as we went around. So keeping the hat in the same configuration as if you were to just still continue, I need you to count from the stitch marker, okay? And we're just gonna start in the next one there. So we're just gonna go one and we're gonna count to 22. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 insert your hook into that stitch. Grab stitch markers. You're going to need two of these and I want you to mark that stitch. This is the starting of the brim on the one side. Now it doesn't say to do this in the instructions but save yourself some time of counting and what I would do is recommend is that you would count from 22 again. So what you're going to do is that you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Mark that one with the stitch marker as well. So basically what you've done is mark the start and the stops of your, of your stitches so that your brim will appear here. So what you can do now at this point is that you can turn it over and you can kind of see where your brim is going to be coming down when it comes to this hat. So it's actually kind of fun and what you can do, this is a, a tip for you. Do you see these stripes? If you like those to be uniform, what you can do is say, you know what, I really wish that it would be equal to each other. You can actually move them. So you can say, well, I'd really like it to be here instead. Just looking at the other side, let's move it one over to one side and see what happens. So you can just physically just take it out and you can always recount if you have to if you get it wrong and just recount it out like this. Move it over and again count your 22. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22. And I could have just said well if I moved it over a certain amount on this side then I can just assume. Don't ever assume because your pattern may be off on the center point coming down. So I'm moving the stitch marker over. So now I can physically look at this pattern and see where this is. So I like this better. See how it's matched in the middle? So it just makes sense to me. So that's something that you can decide for yourself. So that's a great tip on being able to center your border and you can actually physically see now it's actually straight down as well. So that means that you can do anything as long as you're consistent. For your clarification where we are right now is that we're starting off in the center and basically you will notice that we're going to start increasing stitches. So we go all the way from 22 all the way to 34 stitches. So as we get this brim to be bigger if you follow it it's getting more and absorbing more of more of the hat which is almost a half of the hat when you actually look at it. So you can actually see that it's actually going to pick up more hat along the side. So if you're concerned at any point that is what you can do at that time. Now what we need to do is turn that hat just like we had been before. Turn it upright and I want you to insert your hook but this is what you need to pay attention to is the very beginning right here. Is that we're going to be putting two brims. We're going to put the top brim and the bottom brim and together they make a solid brim. So it's actually two thicknesses to make it that, that what we need. So what we need to do here is that we need to pay attention to where we are sticking our hook. So we're going to be pay, uh, uh, focusing on the back and the front loops. The, fr uh, the front loops are what we're going to be working on for the top side of the brim. So instead of going into both stitches of the slip stitch here, we're only going to go into the front side. Okay? So let's join up our yarn coming into the front loop only. And I don't want to create any knots so we can just weave that in. Again just put it th pull it through like this so it's, we're fastening it on. Okay? And basically I would chain one first and then single crochet into that same line right there to that same one. And then what we're just going to do is that you're going to go into the front loops going all the way to the next stitch marker. It gives you good indication of where you are. 
So what this is gonna do is it's gonna force this brim to kind of kind of fold out towards you. But when we do the back one, when we sew everything together, it's gonna be just fine. So you just have to put uh, trust in it. So I could be counting, but I'm trusting in myself to watch those stitch markers. And basically I'm just gonna keep going along. So I'm gonna meet you back there when we get over to the stitch marker. So just coming all the way to the end, I'm just doing the very last one where the stitch marker is. And now we're just going to turn it. So let's move up to row number two. So row number two, we're going to chain one and we're just gonna work in the regular stitches. So just continue the first ones like so. And now what we're going to do in this line is that we're going to single crochet each one of these but when we get to the very end, we're gonna add on more stitches on this side. So when I, I'll meet, just single crochet yourselves and I'll meet you back over there uh, when I get there in just a moment. So I'm just coming all the way back over and I'm getting into the last stitch here. That was, that was where we started. And then what we have to do at this point is continuing to stay on the, the loops. Okay, so we're gonna just stay on the same loops to make that work. So we're just gonna be on the front loops for the next four. So one, and it's kind of hard to tell, <laughs> two, three, and four. So we're starting to grow it out sideways. So let's turn our work, okay? And so let's begin the next one. So we're gonna go row number three, and what we're going to do is ch chain one and single crochet into each one across. And after we get beyond where we finished over here is that we're gonna add another four to that as well. So I'll meet you back there in just a moment. Okay, we're coming all the way back to where we started and this time then the next four according to the instructions are in the front loops. So we just continue. So we just jump down right to the, where we started and just do the next four. So it kind of forces it to make a shape which is good. Let's turn our work and we're ready to go again. So okay let's move up to row number four very easy and again it's what you already know so it says chain one and then single crochet in each stitch across Okay, and then at the end of this line here, it's saying to um, single crochet in the back loop of the next stitch. So we're, instead of going four, we're only gonna go one extra after this. So I'll meet you back there in just a moment. So finishing up row number four, we're just coming right to the end and then we're just gonna go into the back loop of the next one that is down here. Okay, and that's it. So let's uh, turn around and we are just going to go in row number five and chain one and single crochet ourselves across. And on the other side, we're just gonna put in one extra as well and that time we'll be on the front loop instead. So continue to do this across. I'll meet you back there in just a moment. Okay, we're coming up to the end of row number five and I'm just single crocheting right to the end that we have going on. And then basically down here again, we just come into the front loop for one single crochet. Let's turn our work again. Let's move up to row number six. We're only gonna have one more row after this. We're gonna chain one and turn. And this row here is the same thing. We're just going to single crochet into the back loop, an extra one at the very end of this as well. So I'll meet you there in just a moment. Okay, coming to the end of row number six and this time we're gonna single crochet back down on the line here and go into the back loop for single crochet. So let's turn, uh, this is the final row number seven. You can kind of see it makes sense at this point. And essentially, let's chain up one. And at the end of this row here, we're going to single crochet into the front loop. So I'll meet you back there in just a moment and the front brim would then be complete at that time. Coming up to the end of row number seven, I just crochet right to the end and then we single crochet into the front loop down here. So we're gonna fasten off at this time and what I recommend at this point, let's do our single crochet. When you fasten off, leave quite a bit of long um, yarn here. What you wanna do at the end is that you wanna sew the brim together. So we can use this front brim area. So let's just pull this yarn out and just let it be for now. And what I need you to do, we're gonna reset and we're gonna start the back brim. So this is what you have at this moment. So it's really easy. And it looks really great. I'm really happy with it so far. So let's uh, begin. Let's turn our work as if we're looking at the inside of the hat and this is considered the wrong side. So when we started this brim, we were like this if you remember. Okay, this time we're gonna look at the inside of the hat and look for our stitch markers that we currently have in position. 
I'm going to prepare our new yarn. So I'm going to start exactly where we have the stitch marker. So you can see it was kind of convenient that we've already got that marked. So I recommend that. So here we go. Let's join. Okay. And let the straggler fall down so we can bury it underneath and chain one and single crochet. So this is going into, I should say, this is the front loop. So remember that last time we were working on this and we only went into the one loop. This time we're going into the opposite loop that's left, if that makes any sense to you. Okay, so it's considered, so right now it would be classified as the, the back loops at this time. Really quite easy and uh, it's just really easy. So just uh, continue to single crochet yourself across the line until you get to the other stitch marker on the other side. I went all the way to the stitch marker and now I'm going to turn my work and let's move up to row number two. So you can see that the front flap here is actually already facing down. So that doesn't really matter at this point anyway. But uh, anyway let's move up but we're going to chain one and then single crochet into each one and then at the end what we're going to do is that we're going to get the other side stitches here. So we're going to add on another four on the other side when we go to do that. So just single crochet ourselves across and when I come back I will have, I will um, be at the end of this line and show you what to do there if you're confused. Okay I'm coming up at the end of the line where I've got no more stitches left and so at the end of row number two we're going to put in um, single crochets into the front loops that are available here down here. So with the next four, okay we just come straight down so one and then so we're working back down that line two, three and four and that completes off the round number two. So let's our row number two, let's turn our work again, move up to row number three, chain one and then we're just going to single crochet into each at the end and when we come to the end of row number three we're going to be doing another four stitches extra down back on the main line. So I'll meet you there in just a moment. Okay coming up to the end of row number three just coming right to the final and then basically we have that another four and this is going to go into the back loops on the other side. So let's just move that stitch marker out of the way and come into the back loops here. So one and two three and four. Okay, let's turn our work and go on to row number four. Really easy, we just chain up one, single crochet into each one going across. Now at the end of row number four we're only going to do one extra at the end and that will be right into, what's it say, it says this uh, single crochet in the front loop. So I'll meet you there in just a moment. Finishing up row number four we're coming to the end of the line Okay and now the next one is a single crochet back down here. Okay and that is the front loop that we see. So come on down. So just come on down onto the front loop just like there. Single crochet. Let's turn our work and move up to row number five. And five is just as easy. Chain one, single crochet into the first one and then in each along the way and then what we're going to do is single crochet into the back loop. So we've got one extra to do after we get this line done. Finishing up row number five just coming right to the end again and this time we are going to go one extra and it says into the back loop. So the front and back loops keep changing on each side depending on the way that the hat is turned. So once you get to the end of the line just come back down and just get the next one that's available to you like there. Okay, let's turn our work and continue to for row number six. Okay, we chain one, single crochet into each and at the end of this one we are going to do an extra um, beyond that and that's in the front loop that time. So this is row number six. Okay, we're coming up to the end of row number six, just going right to the end of the line here and then we come down. Okay and this is row number six so that means, do you see how this brim here is kind of matching? So when I come down you can see that they mirror each other. So that I know that when they fold they're going to be proper. So that's a great way to test. So let's uh, do um, row number seven. We simply just chain up one and single crochet ourselves across and at the end we're just going to do one extra at the end and the same thing should happen with the brim. It should be a mirror image on the other side as well. So I'll meet you there in just a moment. Coming up to the end of row seven I just have one more stitch here and then I just have to come down and single crochet into the back loop. Okay so you can see that the mirroring image has happened. So no camera tricks, it's the real deal. 
and that's awesome. So what I wanna do now is that I wanna fasten that off. I just finished row number seven. I'm just gonna fasten off and I wanna take a good care of, of weaving this end in and you can leave the extra yarn on the inside of the hat without anybody um, really um, noticing. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab my darning needle. I'll show you how to do this um, really quickly. A good way to hide in your yarn is using a darning needle and this is really thick and it's actually going through this little uh, thing. So what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that I wanna capture it but knowing that this is the interior of the brim, I don't mind actually coming on the inside of this and kinda just gliding this through a few stitches on the inside of the hat so you don't ever see it on the outside just like that. Okay, so this is just the extra yarn here. So I just wanna glide it and you wanna make sure you go in three different directions. So you wanna go one direction Okay, I'm pulling it kind of nice to make a nice rounded edge and then I go back into the direction I came but make sure you insert the needle from into different fibers going in the other direction. It's impossible to fall out if the yarn is going in three directions. Let's go back again for the final one just a gliding it under a few fibers like so. And you can safely then cut this yarn at that point and you will never ever have that fall out within your lifetime like that. So what I want to do now is that we want to start forming the brim. So here is the brim and it's not yet sewn and we're going to do that next. I'm now ready to sew my brim shut. So basically this is the front of the hat. You can see that the brim is now open. I found with myself because of how fabulous this yarn is and how thick this will be, you don't need to put stiffener in. That's just a personal choice. What I recommend, we're going to use the yarn that I asked you to leave extra that was in the very beginning and I want you to come back down to the brim of the hat. So not the brim but just actually just a, a couple stitches over. Okay and basically that's going to pull that brim over so that it aligns nicely so you have a nice rounded when it comes around. Okay so now what you want to just do is that you want to loop it around the bottom and back through the top of the brim. And noticing I'm using the same color by the way so it really is hard to tell where it is. And so basically you are just going to match stitch for stitch and kind of just uh, do a whip stitch going around the top stitches of the hat. Okay and so basically you are just forming the brims to sandwich together by just going in both. And you're just going to do that all the way across. Just be mindful of your stitching and just take your time. When you get uh, closer to the other side you just really want to make sure that you have been uh, capturing your stitches properly. If you've miscounted at any point you might have one or two out. You know use your creative license to be able to wing it if you have to. So when I come back I'll have this uh, done and we'll weave off the edges just like or weave off the ends just like I just showed you. And this is going to be a fun and this is really is the fun with brimming hat. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of the brim and remember how I had you go into a section that was before the brim started to make it rounded off. You're going to want to do this on this side as well because what happens is if you don't um, you see how it's kind of a straight up line from the brim. So what you want to just do is you want to come down and just pull it so it'll pull it down like that. And then just fasten it in. Just do a few extra stitches and it's a great way to be able to even the playing field I guess you can say. And just uh, just weave off your ends as normal and then when we come back I'll show you the hat complete. Okay so let's pull out our stitch markers now. Just really easy. Just good to go. Out, out and just pull this one out and it's good to go. And my hat actually the tension is a little bit looser on mine so mine is perfect actually for any woman that ha women that have like long hair. And basically this is what it looks like at this point because if you have big hair it'll sit perfectly with this. And then Colleen's version that she did for the prototype here is slightly smaller. Her stitching is slightly uh, tighter than mine and it worked out really good. So on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com and thank you to Shaka Meyer as well as Red Heart Yarns for sharing your patterns with us today. Until next time we'll see you.